described to you today is an ITI trailers and truck body spill, 130 barrel full dump, full veneer rear door dump trailer with a diesel driven MVE 4310 blower, 1000 CFM. Uh, we recommend only operating this unit when it's hooked up to a suitable tractor that can handle the, the load requirements of the trailer. We, we recommend using the uh, lift axle in the up position when you're dumping uh, to keep a more stable load on the rear, uh, the rear axles. We want to make sure you always are on a level and stable uh, area before uh, dumping and always checking for overhead wires and make sure no one is in the rear area uh, for the danger of uh, the material coming out. The lift axle is just uh, push-pull operated. There's a regulator here to regulate the down pressure for the requirements on to, uh, for the axle, your axle weights. And then a simple uh, pull out to, uh, to raise, push into the lower. Uh, this is the ladder to access onto the top be caution of uh, wet and slippery surfaces. This piece of equipment right here is the Rit Ritter, which is the primary function of this is to prevent any debris that comes in from the tank, gets separated, drops down into the Grit Ritter system. That should be uh, sec checked daily and cleaned as needed. This unit right here is the secondary moisture trap. It sh there's a, a valve at the very bottom. It should be drained daily at uh, the start and end of every day to prevent uh, moisture and dirt from collecting and freezing. Right here is the manual clutch to disengage and engage the uh, blower itself. The, after the engine is at up to operating temperature, you should have the engine RPM at approximately 1500 RPMs and just come up here and just uh, firmly uh, grasp and, and push it into a, in gear. That will engage it. You can also just come back here, reverse the operation, dis disengage it to take it out of gear. These are the uh, pressure reliefs that have already been preset at 15 PSI. This is the operation to go from pressure to vacuum, and the middle is neutral. Completely over here where it, uh, the arrow describes it to pressure, it takes the, the blower into pressure. Middle is neutral. Clear to the, uh, to the right is vacuum, and then the, the unit should be uh, left and started in the neutral position to prevent any excessive load on the blower itself. This is the drain for the grit ridder and the clean out to get any of the debris out of the grit ridder system. These are the two valves to uh, drain daily for the, uh, the secondary moisture trap. In here is the controls for the S bar heating system. There's a auto and manual operation to run it on timers. Uh, the simple owner's manual to go through on how to, uh, to program it for daily runs, continuous one and off cycles. Uh, this is the S bar heater inside of here. It's fed off of the diesel, uh, the, the diesel fuel tank. Here is the coolant system for the S bar system for the heating system, which heats the valves. Uh, as long as the uh, coolant system is in the midways of this uh, line here for the fill, it will be good. The, this is the hydraulic tank for the uh, dump tank and the rear opening door. Uh, we recommend running it right here to the full position. Uh, there's a sight glass right here that, uh, to keep track of that. Okay. This is the controls for the for the diesel engine that drives the power units. Uh, there's a simple uh, on-off switch. Uh, you turn the switch on, wait for the uh, to cycle through, then you uh, push and hold the uh, preheat. If it's uh, cold, you let the preheat uh, take over until uh, it clicks. I believe you count to 15 seconds, uh, and, but you always use the, uh, the permissive start to engage the, uh, the, the motor, uh, hold it while you are uh, running the start motor. After it is uh, started up and operating temperature, you want to run the RPMs up to 1500 RPMs before going and engaging the, uh, the clutch for the blower. Uh, we want to run the blower uh, between 2000 to 2500 RPMs on the motor. That will give you the proper operating RPMs of the blower itself. Uh, here's the controls to engage the electric clutch 
for the hydraulic motor. Uh, when the light is on, the pump is engaged. Uh, we recommend uh, that approximately 2,000 RPMs, although it doesn't matter uh, what RPMs you run the hydraulic motor at, 2,000 RPMs gives you a nice slow uh, operation. Uh, the light switch above this is for the work lights that's on the, the pump itself. This is the controls for the uh, radar gauge. You turn it on, it takes about nine seconds to go through its cycle, and then it'll give you uh, the reading from the uh, floor of the tank to the top simple on and off operation. Uh, after the motor is started, well, I'll walk up, I will uh, engage the blower to, to vacuum in order to release the gate. Uh, we recommend uh, pulling the back the truck down to uh, approximately 10 to 15 inches of vacuum. That uh, compresses the seal and lets the wing nuts be able to come in and be tightened up easily uh, so it does not leak under the pressure. You may have to uh, draw a little bit more vacuum down and continually uh, uh, go around the, the worm screws, uh, the wing nuts to tighten up the gate to keep it from leaking under pressure mode. And then whenever you want to uh, release the, uh, the, the gate, we'll go and draw the vacuum down to, you can take it down to 24 to 25 inches of vacuum. That'll compress the gaskets even more so it's easier to undo the, the wing nuts. You want to keep the, the lid under vacuum to all of the, uh, the the wing nuts are off. You want to make sure before ever loosening any of the the wing nuts or the manways on the top or any of the dust covers that there is no pressure in the tank because uh, uh, that would cause uh, serious bodily harm if there would be pressure and you would release the wing nuts uh, and it could definitely uh, harm yourself or kill yourself or someone else. So uh, keep the uh, pressure or the vacuum under the gate. Uh, We'll do is uh, I'll show you here when it's running an operation. After we have all the wing nuts released, I'll come back up. I will uh, put the pump in neutral position. I'll disengage the uh, the blower, but it's not necessary. The blower can continually to run if uh, if you would need to do that for any particular reason. Uh, we'll come back down. I will uh, release the gate because uh, you don't want to try to release the gate under the full vacuum because then the hydraulic system has to overcome the vacuum. But pretty well as soon as you release the pump in the neutral and this starts to, uh, the pressure starts to equalize when you go and crack the gate. Uh, now some material can come out sideways. That's why we have the controls uh, not at the very rear but up just far enough to uh, should be out of uh, any way of water coming out of that. Release, uh, raise the gate completely. Uh, there is an integrated safety latch that uh, will uh, activate as the gate is at a completely raised position and enters an air override to release it uh, to let the gate come closed. You want to again make sure that there's no overhead obstructions, wires, and again that the, the uh, uh, trailer is sitting on a stable conditions, hooked up to a tractor. You never want to unhook the tractor from a loaded trailer on the, with the landing gear. Uh, a loaded trailer should always be hooked up to the tractor and it should not be operated unless it is hooked up to a tractor. So here we'll go ahead and uh, start it up here.
engine off so you can hear what we're doing. The push the button to release the switch, and then the gate can then also uh, start coming down. After securing the wind gun, we then will draw the vacuum down, compress the seal, and then come back and tighten down the wing nuts more to make a fully uh, sealed gate.